So we continue with our uh, video interview series, The Hidden Black History of the Diocese of Newark with Mr. Robert Cottingham representing Epiphany Church in Orange. And Bob, thank you so much for being here. We feel blessed and fortunate to have this opportunity to hear about our history through your eyes and your voice. Thank you for having me. This is great. Appreciate it. So tell us about your perspective of our Black history, considering another one of our historically Black churches, in this case, Epiphany Orange. Thanks, Jane. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. And so for me, I've got, you know, I always think about the history of um, the Black church, which is my church, but I also have to kind of reflect upon some of the challenges, and we'll talk about those, but also that I feel kind of uh, not inept, but close enough to that because, and I'll tell you why, because I mean, you know, it's funny seeing myself as one of the old heads now, I'm 55, uh, but there are so many people in our church who are 40 years older than I am. I just am really fortunate to be um, the child of and the grandchild of and the great grandchild of some folks who have come through the Church of the Epiphany. And so I called up my dad yesterday just to get some reflection. He's down with my sister in DC right now. He's 92 years old. And he's one of the folks that has been around there for a while. He's also what I call the in-law, you know what I mean? And my historical perspective comes from my mother's side of the family. Those are the Slocums and the Birds and the Gladdens. And we've got some generational uh, families in the Church of the Epiphany. And you may or may not know, but we recently consolidated or merged with Christ Church. And therein lies some of the historical challenges as well. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, way, way, way back when, many, many moons ago, uh, families like ours, Black families, could not go to Christ Church nor to Grace Church. And the Church of the Epiphany is an outgrowth of that rejection. And I think that's probably one of the most fascinating pieces of this story is that we've actually come full circle. And some would uh, receive that well, and some people receive that with a, a bit of a sour taste in their mouth. It's, it's really a challenge. And so I think for many of us who have come through the Church of the Epiphany, uh, we've taken a lot of lumps. And we've had to really do what humans do, which is to roll with the punches, adapt, be malleable, and um, survive, right? And then thrive. So, so what do I mean? Um, I, I will give you my version of our history through my and my family's lens with a little bit of what I know about um, other families. And it's a similar story, which is um, we'll do the Gladdens and the Birds and the Slocums and the Cottinghams, which is what I'm a part of. But my um, great grandmother um, is the one who brought my family into the Church of the Epiphany. And we, uh, we come from a family that's influenced by family. So many, many moons ago, my, I guess, well, her brother was a butler at a house in Philadelphia. And uh, for a white family who attended Episcopal Church in Philly, and that was his exposure. And he reached out to his sister. Um, we called her Ma. Her name was Sarah Ellen Bird. She was born Sarah Ellen Gladden. And uh, she took a call or a communication from her brother who said there's this wonderful denomination, this wonderful church. It's the Episcopal Church. You ought to take a look at it. And so she did. Um, my great-grandmother said, uh, okay, what's this all about? 
and they found an Episcopal church, and that was Christ Church in Orange, and they walked over from Ashland Avenue in East Orange to Christ Church, which was nearly right around the corner, and they were told they couldn't worship there, and um, <clears throat> we, don't have, we don't take Blacks here, but, you know, over there in Orange, they have a, a church for Black folks, and so that's how my family got engaged. They had to walk past the church, uh, Christ Church, and continue on and found the Church of the Epiphany in Orange. And at that time, I believe it was on Pearson Street in Orange. And so my great grandmother took her family there, which was, you know, my grandmother, who was named um, uh, Sarah Josephine Bird named after Sarah Ellen Bird, and she had four children, uh, Alfred, uh, Oliver, Sarah, another Sarah Ellen, and Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn was my mother. And so they all eventually went to the Church of the Epiphany in Orange, and all of them from my grandmother down were baptized and confirmed and married and buried out of the Church of the Epiphany. And <clears throat> my father, who moved to my mother's block, as she would say, um, when he was about you know, 11, um, joined the church because my mother was a part of that church. And they were married in that church. I was married in that church to my wife, Allison, and our kids are baptized and confirmed along with all of us. I was confirmed by Bishop Spong many, many moons ago. And so we all did this um, <clears throat> out of Pearson Street until we moved over to Grace Church, what was the old Grace Church, um, in about 1986, uh, when the congregation, the white congregation that didn't want us either, um, they said no, you know, and they were the ones that formed Church of the Epiphany under the seminary, and we'll get there. But we moved back into the building where we were rejected. So in, in my life's history, in my life's story, I've always heard the stories about having to walk past Christ Church on Main Street, couldn't be a part of Grace Church in Orange on Main Street next to the Y. And now we've merged with Christ Church and we ha are inhabiting the building, the original Grace Church building in Orange since 1986. And so that's what I mean about that bittersweet aspect. These were both places that rejected Black people simply because of the color of their skin. And now we're worshiping with and in the same location where we were rejected. And that's the, that's the adapt adaptability of Black folks, you know, who just wanted to worship. And um, Christ Church. Uh, recently merged with us under Father Harmon. And, you know, we were started, and that was the end of Christ Church as its own. That was the end of the Church of the Epiphany as its own under uh, Father Harmon. But along the way, we, we, you know, we had different paths. Obviously, Christ Church was a, a white church that over time, because of various and sundry things, white flight, um, became a black church that was always called the Guyanese church way back when we were called the Jamaican church way back when you know what I mean and so now we've got such a mixture of Latinos blacks from the Caribbean blacks from the United States blacks from Africa what a mix white folks from around the corner so, you know what I mean? It is an amazing mix and it represents the area very, very well. And so we're doing great. We're coming together, but it, it was a journey. And so we never want to forget. And that's why it was, it was noted that Epiphany should come first in the name, the merged name, because Epiphany was one that was always Black created by Blacks for Blacks. And there aren't a ton of those types of churches in the area. It's really 
really significant when you focus in on the fact that it was started as black for blacks. Now, why? Because we couldn't go anywhere else. But nonetheless, that is the history. So we started because we couldn't go to Grace Church and Grace Church said, no, 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 you're not coming here, but you can go across town there and you can have a Sunday school for black kids. You can have a Sunday school for black kids. And so don't come here, but do that over there. And so that's what happened. Um, a Sunday school for black kids was started in Orange and then a seminarian, a seminarian um, was the one who was presiding over what became the Church of the Epiphany as a mission. It was a mission. And then it said, it's not gonna take that, those mission funds from Grace Church. We're gonna separate out. And so the seminarian, George Marshall Plaskett, eventually became ordained. And over the successive years, he was the priest of the Church of the Epiphany. And he, be, he was the priest for 50 years. He was the guy, 50 years. In all of my life, you know, he was just known as the great Father Plaskett. He was the guy. He was a disciplinarian. He was a religious leader, leader and he had extremely high standards for his congregation. And that church was the place to be for Black folks. And he also later started um, out of our church, um, I think it's Trinity in Montclair, it was a, an outgrowth out of the Church of the Epiphany. Yeah. And there's a couple others that I'm, I'm, I can't remember, but, you know, my family has been on the altar. You know what I mean? My uncles were acolytes. I was an acolyte. My kids were acolytes. You know what I mean? But they all got their start. We all got our start out of that church and using that George Marshall Plaskett manner and standard and way of doing it. And it was very precise. It was very orderly. It was almost intimidating. And it probably was intimidating. But we all knew the same things. And we all spoke the same language because we all had done very similar jobs in church. I was a boat boy. And then you went from a boat boy to... Of, you know, for the you know um, for the incense, and then eventually um, you could get your way to the altar. You know what I mean, and and you know lay readers. But this was a family, and it still is a family. And through Zoom, we remained a family. But all those old ways, all that old order, remains intact. And so, if you think about it, I mean, we're steeped in tradition. The altar we have now at Grace Church is the altar from Pearson Street, made out of marble from Italy. And it cost us a pretty penny. We could not leave it behind, a pretty penny to move. Not only a pretty penny to get, but a pretty, pretty penny to move. And we didn't want to lose that tradition. It's the same exact altar that I grew up with over in Pearson Street that moved over in about 1986. And so, you know, um, Bob Simmons mentioned, he's like, listen, when we're, when we're doing this merge, he came from Christchurch, when we were doing this merge and move, he said, you know, I, I mean, we voted on this as a, a congregation, what the name would be, the new name, uh, Epiphany in Christ Church. But he said, you know, we should make this Church of the Epiphany at least the lead name because we want to keep that tradition and keep that going. The other thing that's really important to know is that's our charter. Right, so the charter, we worked really hard to maintain that charter um, when we did the merge. Instead of sometimes historically, what has had to happen was the charters of each were stopped. So you stop the charter for Christ Church, you stop the charter for um, Epiphany, and then you come up with a new charter, and it begins from there. It's not what we did. We did something significant because we didn't want that history lost which was to amend the original charter of the Church of the Epiphany, because that is that way we maintain that history on the record. And so this is the Church of the Epiphany with an amended charter to include the merger of Christ Church. And so it was done deliberately and specifically because we did not want that to be lost. And so 
took a lot of extra work, but we were able to maintain that lineage to a church that was for black folks who couldn't be anywhere else, started by black folks, you know, who couldn't be by couldn't be anywhere else. And so we're very proud of that. But I think that what many people don't know, the hidden thing is that it really comes out of what couldn't be, what couldn't happen. And we just wanted to worship together. We wanted to worship somewhere. And many families that came to the Church of the Epiphany at that time um, were varied and sundry professions. Um, And it, it ranged the gamut. And it still ranges the gamut. And so you know, all the people, no matter what you were wearing, no matter what you were doing, um, you could come to this church, no matter what your background was, because we all had that commonality, which was we wanted to worship together, but we couldn't worship at Christ Church, so you had to walk by that. Couldn't worship at Grace Church, so you had to walk by that, and it had to go across town to where the Black folks could be, which was Pearson Street in Orange, and we grew, um, And we eventually inhabited, like I said, Grace Church, because that was something that Bishop Spahn wanted us to do, to inhabit a street, uh, inhabit a building on Main Street um, where we could have the exposure. So that's where we are. We're here now, and um, we're making a strong go of it. And through all those evolutions, we've been here for well over 100 years, and we're going strong. So it's great to be a part of it. But what do you know the year that Epiphany was established? Yeah, that's a good all the way back. I think it's like 1906. Something like 1906. There's a few iterations, right? So there's 1906 is which I think when like the Sunday school might have started or the mission. Then there is a 1911 date, which is when like the mission might have become. But the Sunday school might have turned into the mission. And then I think in like a 1916 date when the mission turned into a parish that was received into the diocese. So those dates, I think it's 06, 11, and 16 are the dates that are of significance way, way, way back when. And then like I mentioned, um, uh, 86 is when we moved from Pearson Street to Main Street inhabiting the building where we are now, which was the former Grace Church. Grace Church died out. They died out, you know? It's always the women left behind, right? And uh, because there's always more women than men. And then the women died out, you know what I mean? And so a fund was left to, you know, because the building is a white elephant. Uh, We didn't know that at the time, but it was. We probably would have been better served to have stayed in the building we were in. We were fine. But the diocese saw it a different way, so we moved. You know, um, they saw that as a better place for us, and that's well, that's debatable. But nonetheless, there was a fund that was established for us. Um, but that you know takes a lot to maintain this building. If you ever see 105 Main Street, you'll see a, a huge building, and it, you know it takes a lot to take care of. But in addition to that, the word is this is very interesting. Um, the sexton burned up the building, set fire to it, because this is what the, the story goes. The legend says that he did not want this black congregation moving into um, the building on Main Street. And if you walk through the living quarters, there are living quarters in um, the church for the sexton, you'll see they're all burnout, crispy burnout. We it's it you, know, you have to go up a few flights of stairs, but he set fire. The word is um, because he was not pleased that the old congregation was coming out and the black congregation was coming in, and so it's remained that way. Charred, it's still charred up there and not utilized. But it's it's uh yeah it's like like living quarters for the sexton, and so. You know, the fire was put out, but that's that was just before we moved over there. That sounds like something out of an old movie script, you know, <laughs> haunted by the by the old sexton who didn't. Unbelievable! <laughs> wow. Like so yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but we survived. We're there. You know, yeah, it's, of course. It's, it's put on a lot of programs, 
uh, Black History Month programs, um, you know, Epiphany, our namesake pageants, right? We always did Three Kings. Um, fashion, I, I grew up on fashion shows, you know, uh, barbecues on the front um, lawns of the church. And we used to have something that we called the center on Webster Place, um, like the black section of orange. You know, all these things we did, family picnics, family barbecues, and it, it was and is a real community. And we just had a parishioner die and we talked about some of the old things that we used to do like family fun night and movie night and teen night and all of those things we did. And they've been doing them for generations, you know, the St. Agnes Guild and all of all the things that make a community a community and a family a family um, have been going on for generations at the Church of the Epiphany and now the Church of the Epiphany in Christ Church. And it's, it's a blessing to be a part of it, it really is. It's home. So when we went to this funeral um, last week, it was just like old home week. And it was in person. It was social distance. We had our masks on, but um, people come out, you, you know what I mean? And because of Zoom now, like you and I are doing, um, more people can participate from uh, that have moved away to warmer weather, off in Florida, but they really, really want to maintain that community. And that's what we do so well in this black church, the Church of the Epiphany in Christ Church. It's a it's a blessing to be a part of. That's so amazing and so wonderful to hear. And so wonderful to expose. I mean it's another it's another it's another lantern lit under the bushel. Let's get the bushels out of the way and shine the light. And That's I think right. <laughs> you've done a wonderful job um you know helping me to see the light about the history of Church of the Epiphany and just today and it, it inspires one to want to know more. So um thank you so much.